edition of the Gasso Cast. I'm your host, Ryan Mass, and I'm joined here by Michael Timmons, Blues Tucci. We are wrapping up our fifth weekend of going out to basketball tournaments, seeing players, and it was another great weekend, fellas. Um, but before we get started, I want to make sure that you know a couple of things. First, Blue and I got Twitters. Um, so please go follow us at Gasso Mass, at Gasso Blue. Um, we're sharing different content. It's been good so far. Um, yeah, so go follow yeah, us. Yeah, go follow them, man. They want, they want to, they, they have, they have some goals in mind of followers they want. So yeah. get them, get them, get them some follow. <laughs> like but no, all, all ninety-three. Y'all doing some great content for sure. Ten thousand. Oh. Ten thousand. Okay. <laughs> um, also, our new high school scoreboard app is live, and it is district season. Okay, it's Tuesday, December fourteenth. We've got district games all over the state tonight. So make sure and go get that today. Um, follow all the scores. DT is doing an awesome job. DT, shout out. Um, is doing an awesome job getting those scores updated. I'm helping and stepping in where I can, where he can't find stuff, which is very rare. Um, <laughs> accurate district game times, scores, up-to-date times and locations, district standings, playoff brackets, and then you can have team notifications. So We, we can almost say that this is like a 24-7 operation because Derek will stay up until 3 a.m. looking for... Some score in Brown in Brownsville. Refreshing it <laughs> at three a.m. Like something's gonna change. Um, yeah. So get that. Um, so let's kick it off by where we went, and then let's jump into jump into our headliners. So Blue, where'd you go this weekend? I went. I uh, spent some time at uh, River City Classic in New Braunfels, uh, San Antonio ISD, the Le- the Leander tournament, and then finished up at uh, Pflugerville on Friday night. And then Mass and I went to the same area. I actually picked up Mass from the airport at 7 a.m. on um, last Thursday. God bless my And we got man. right into it. Um, Long trip for the guy. Fort Bend, <laughs> Cy Fair, Stars and Stripes. So we, we covered Houston pretty well this past weekend. Yeah, we got to, that, that, that's a beautiful transition into our headliners. And let's not forget, Sam Lowe has been traveling just as much as we have. We got to um, prove it if he, he has to prove it. Come up here and let, let the people know. We'll, we'll get a segment for him. <laughs> Sam says. Sam says. Oh, that's an easy transition. Um, headliners. Yeah. Okay, I'll jump in. Chris Johnson. Oh, man. I, I think I tweeted that he might be the most talented kid in the 2023 class. His vision, his feel, all the things that he does with his ball in his hands. He's 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 great to watch. He's fun. He's very... Um, he just gets the feel of the game and how it should be played. And when it's time to score, he can go score. So... I, I love Chris. I've, I've been a very big fan of him for a while now. It started when he was a sophomore. I saw him with Texas Pro. Um, he's ridiculous. Yeah, I think we, I talked about this in our fall gas when Houston, you know, his teammates want to play with him because they always expect that the ball is going to be coming, whether it's a, a zip pass, a lob. You know, I got there at 8 a.m. for their 9 o'clock game Thursday, and right away he's dropping dimes, throwing lobs to Jackson Fields. And just if you run the floor, he's going to find ways to – even if it's a little opening, you know, get his teammates the ball. And I think he's doing really well with mixing up scoring and facilitating. It makes the game look really, really easy. Correction, it was with Houston Hoops. He might have played with that Texas Pro Group. Oh, yeah. No, Houston yeah. Hoops, though. It was, yeah. yeah, I know that for yeah. sure. Um, we saw the battle of two really, really good oh, point yeah. guards. No, I was excited for this game. And there was other really good players in this game. Fort Bend Ridge Point versus Fort Bend Marshall. But the, the headliner, I would say, was the battle of the point guards. Yeah, Jalen Lowe and TJ Ford Jr. And TJ Ford really played well in this game. And he showed his ability to really, really shoot the ball. He went right at, at Jalen. Um, and they just they just battled back and forth. Unfortunately, Jalen got hurt um, at the beginning of the fourth quarter when, yeah. they were, when Fort Ben Marshall started to grab some momentum. Yeah, I think they cut it like five or six, and they were kind of down nine. So that yeah. was a tough blow for them. And just both of those two guys, it was just a very worthy matchup. It was, it was a college basketball type yeah. battle between the two. I mean, two two very nice prospects, two point guards who truly play point guard. And um, Fort Ben got the better of them in in that game. We're gonna which be Fort Ben Ridge Point, my bad. Yeah. Fort Ben Ridge Point got the better in that game, and we'll be mentioning some more of those players. Yeah, and this was actually a full game recap that I already have on on YouTube dot uh, com slash Text Hoops Television with. You know, all these other players, like we said, played well. You can see it all there, but it was a high-level game. Um, real back and forth, and, you know, the guards really showed up. It's fun when we get to watch those games that aren't a lot of, like, half-court. It was just up and down, yeah. playmaking, Chris Marshall. 
Absolute freak. Absolutely. Yeah. Jameer Turner on, on Ridge Point. Conley Christmas yeah. on Ridge Point. There's a lot of a lot of good players. Um for me, headliner wise, you know, we did go down to Houston, but DFW went down to Houston as well, and that's the, McKinney. McKinney came down to the Cy Fair Invitational and won the whole thing. And I got to see them twice, you know, once um, uh, Friday, I think in the second round or third round game, and then Thursday as well. But, I mean, Jacoby Walter continues to be on a tear. Um, his shot-making ability is just really incredible. And just the pieces on McKinney is why they're going to be in the mix as one of the favorites to go deep and possibly make a state run. If you're looking at somebody that I know we obviously see what Duncanville's doing right now, but their team makeup, they have guards that guard, can mix it up. They have bigs that crash the glass. Uh, Anamakwe is hitting threes. Thatcher McClure is hitting corner threes. Those two guys are crashing the board. So you just have a little bit of everything that you want in the makeup and a team build. They're obviously well coached. And going down to Houston, they try to prove a point, and they did, beating a, a big time uh, uh, side falls in the championship game. Without and, Devin Vincent. And I think that that's very important that where everybody's talking about Duncanville and Richardson over the last few weeks. I'm sure Wes Watson kind of likes the, the non-exposure of like, okay, well, let's just yeah. keep going doing what we're doing. And that's a great point that even though you were in Houston, you saw a Dallas team because we get to see them mix it up right. uh, against different teams. And that's why, uh, you know, watching Clear Lake for me uh, down in, uh, in Pflugerville tournament uh, was a, a great spot to catch them. And I, I finally got to catch them over, um, over the weekend. And first off, I mean, they're a team that's at seven, 17 wins already. They're 17 and four. They've played a great schedule. Uh, Tommy Penders, I think, has to be talked about among one of the better uh, coaches when you look from top to bottom because he just goes with what he's dealt. You, you know, he had the Sonnies in there uh, in kind of back-to-back -back years that has that helped them. But when you look at their lineup, you have to you watch them. They play together. They play with chemistry. They make the extra passes. Uh, you know, we talk about bloodlines in basketball. Well, he has a bloodline of, of coaching. I mean, his dad, I agree. His, 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 his dad is a Hall of Fame coach and was recently uh, inducted into the UT Hall of Fame uh, for basketball. And, and so he really gets the most out of his key, kids, you know, from um, Travis uh, uh, Cohen to, uh, to Alex Lee, who we don't have ranked, and that's a mistake. I mean, finally, I, I finally got to see him. And that dude is good. He's going to Williams and the high, high, high academic Division three, and that dude can play. He makes the great passes. He shoots the three. He handles the ball, rebounds. Really good rebounder for for a guard. And I mean, he just fights his teammates like Vaughn Wells. They're all seniors, but they play together. They know how to win, and they're going to uh, take you to the limit on in every single possession. That brings us uh, to the last group of headliners, and that's John Paul, Dallas John Paul versus Wagner. A lot of talent in this game, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. John Paul is a big four, mm -hmm. um, and I've seen Elijah Obiseki three times now, and he belongs there. He's three for five for three this time. I mean, you're big stretching the four. It's, it's a big deal, but I truly believe that the two guys who started, uh, stole the show, Liam McNeely, who's a 2024, and RJ Jones, 2023, special offensive players. They get how to play, and then they just go to R.J. Jones. Like he, some of the baskets and some of the things that he can do, they're ridiculous. Yeah. The skill level is is off the chart, and the shot making ability is off the chart. And when those two get going, they can put you down twenty, cool. thirty, really, really quick. You know, and I think they'll continue to, because right now, I mean, they're playing at a level where they can get any shot they want, and they can hit any shot that they take. And with that, they're going to get these big leads. You know, I talked to them after the game and just said, hey, now focus on, like, take, I know they're both 20, 2023, 2024. Now work on not letting the team back in it. Obviously, you can get any shot you want. I talked to RJ. He's already continues to work on his point guard skills. But right now, the level that he's playing at is just incredible. You know, the confidence. Um, and like you said, they have a big four. And, I mean, shoot, they're so well-rounded. Archibald comes down there and hits shots when they need him as well. So they're going to be a tough, tough out in the TAP 6A. And, you know, anytime they can play against a UIL team, you know, look out because they're coming for you. Yeah, Gabe Warren was that fourth guy. And then I want to mention Austin Nunez. It, it, JP2 did, did handle their business and, and got it big. But the thing about Austin, the motor was on the whole game. 
competing, playing hard, making really good pass passes. I think the most underrated thing about Austin is how well he sees the floor. And I just wanted to give a shout out. I just loved the energy that he played with. He never quit. They were down 15, 20 most of the game. Yeah. And the guy was just getting after it, playing defense, doing everything that you'd want a high major recruit to do. Absolutely. Let's jump into Stock Rogers Blue. Well, Evan Walling from San Antonio Connor, he's, man, I've seen him in back to back weeks, and I've been more impressed both times when I've seen him and then coming back uh, the following week at the New Braunfels tournament in the River City. He just, he's a winner. He makes winning plays, whether it's the rebound, the diving on the floor, defending, knocking down a shot. He is just eye catching for, for, Many levels, and the, and I made a mistake. I wish I had DT with me. With 1.3 seconds left to go on the clock against Hutto, game is tied, and it was a perfect Grant Hill to Christian Langner pass, or what would be as they threw it all the way to the free. The O'Connor threw it all the way to the opposite free throw line. Tips off of uh, Evan Walling's fingertips to the cutting guard for a layup. Most unbelievable finish. I have seen, I've been doing this for a while, just in a kind of regular season tournament atmosphere, it was nuts. And then just shut out to, <laughs> to executing that play. Even, if, even you know, Evan said it wasn't done purposely on the, on the tip. It just so happened it, it went in the right direction. But Evan has been pretty, looks pretty polished the last couple of weeks. And I think he's, the, he's their key in their, in their offense and defense that he gets a lot done. He had a big summer with San Antonio yeah, Fire. Like fire. And I want to give a shout out to At Gasso Clips. That's DT. He does really, really good work. He had his, God bless his phone, his phone space is yeah. it's got to be dwindling. Absolutely. It's <laughs> in game clips, and that's what's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is in game. Yeah, he does a good job. Uh, for me, um, one of the stock risers, I was excited to see this kid coming in this week, um, was 2023 Joseph Tugler of Side Falls. You know, he had a big game previous in the week that I before I got to come down to Houston. But just seeing the levels and, like, the skill that he's added to his game, since I saw him at the our fall classic in Houston, um, he's able to put the ball on the ground. He's relentless in the paint, finishes with both hands. You know, he's no nonsense when he gets the ball around the rim. You know, he'll dunk on you. One thing that I noticed, Sam and I were watching the game, he would rip and drive baseline, kick it to the, the, the corner three. Like, he has some skills down there where it's not just – head down, attack the rim. And just with that that energy and the toughness and the physicality, he's a prospect that we need to keep our eye on in that 2023 class. I got to see Fort Bend Hightower twice. Um, no secret that, you know, Bryce Griggs moved on to overtime league, so somebody's going to have to fill the void. Mm -hmm. And a guy that um, I saw at Fort Bend Hightower twice, and Aaron Williams scored 20 both times. Um, and this guy, he's a strong guard. And he has a really just knack for scoring the ball. He's always looking to score in a healthy way. You know, it's not like he's taking terrible shots, but like if you give him any space, he's going to pull the trigger. He's going to knock down threes. He's he's going to get to the rim. He's real smooth. And then he has a nice little pull-up game. So I, I like his confidence. Um, any time that you can really score the ball in high school, you know, it's it's just going to stand out. And I thought Aaron Williams did a great job. I'm going to go ahead and jump into uh, when I went to Leander tournament. I saw 6'10". Chris, is it, is it Loof? I believe so. Yeah, 6'10". He's all of 6'10". Unsigned senior, and I tell you what. He's a Division One player. He just needs a little. He just needs more developing. Like He was doing some things out there in terms of just the rebound and the shot blocking. Within the offense, he's got a great-looking stroke. Uh, <clears throat> I don't recall him taking too many outside shots, but within the offense, it came out of his hand. It didn't go in, but it looked every bit just great release and everything runs the floor like everything that you want in a big man and I just hope he looks at himself in the mirror and just wants to continue to develop because his best basketball is still a couple years away but you can see it blossoming on the court I'm very excited for him I'm very excited for the prospect of what he can be because I don't think that he's I think he's just scratching the surface and he was one of the most excited players for me as I was texting y'all Hands down, the Division One guy, go get him and develop him because he has a lot of tools. Yeah, um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up Stock Risers with Seth Jones out of Dickinson. A lot of people know who this guy is, and it's because he's uber talented. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's back in full swing, and Dickinson's gonna be a very very tough out. 
and he's the catalyst for them. He, he can really score at all three levels. He's so fast, and he gets downhill and makes plays for others. When he's taking care of the basketball and um, getting others involved and then doing his thing, scoring the ball, really, really like what I saw. So, um, Seth Jones Dickens in 2022. Let's jump to new kids on the block. Blue. Oh, we'll go with Theo Grant first off from Clemens. 2022. Uh, I was a kid off camera, like before heading into the weekend, where guys we wanted to see. That yes. was a name that was brought up a lot in our office. Yeah, and, and, so and you to see him. Yeah, and you kept bringing him up, and I was like, okay, Tim needs to go see him. Clemens is 15 and two, I believe, right now. They are playing some great basketball as a team. Theo Grant <laughs> is one of their main scorers. Can get to places. Just got got some uh, shiftiness to his game. Knocks down perimeter shots. But as a, as a whole, that team. They're taking on, I think, the persona of their of their head coach Robert Bell, as we talked about. A Fox Tech alum was a monster in the in the high school scene in San Antonio back in the the late '90s. Played college ball at uh, at UTSA. He wants what he wanted on the court. He wants for those kids right now. In 15 and two, that means that they're absorbing everything he's coaching them. And it was very uh, good to see that Clemens is back on track. And that 15 and two, that's. Uh, that's, that's pretty solid. <laughs> uh, for me, Elijah Roman of Summer Creek, you know, similar to how Bryce Griggs moved on to overtime, Amari Abram moved to the West Coast and was with um, Southern Cal Academy. Um, Elijah Roman, you know, when you look at the makeup of this Summer Creek team, you have the two stud guards that can go with uh, Goodman and Johnson. You know, he adds another scoring punch, about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, can hit the three, can finish one transition, and the way they play hard, create steals and create turnovers, you need somebody that's going to be efficient in the role when they get the steal, they go, and you got to be able to finish. And he had a 20-point game in the game I saw against uh, Cy Falls, but just a great complimentary piece to those two those two guards in this to make it with Summer Creek. So I wanted to make sure I touched on um, touched on him. Yeah, I'll jump in with Jameer Turner. Um, I have him as new kids on the block. He could have been a stock riser. He could have been an X factor. He could have yeah, been true. a lot of that's things. True. That's true. And we have him in our top 100. But I, I don't feel like this kid gets enough recognition for what he does. Uh, you know, Rich Point is very, very good. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a lot of talented pieces, so it's easy to get uh, missed on in the shuffle. But since the summer, his his ascent has been has been great. And I just want to make sure people know who this guy is. He's a mid-range assassin. He does not miss from the mid-range. And then he defends. He was guarding Chris Marshall, and he did a great job on him. Made him work. He's got length. He's 6'5". He has ball skills. And then 6'5 with the wingspan, that's got to be close to 6'11", 7 foot, man. I, yes, and then he's making passes all over the court. I, I tweeted about him three separate times because I got a little highlight about him, and then I put him in, our, in my wrap-up thread. But Really like what I see out of Jameer. I, he is a he is a college ready prospect with an offensive game, and he can really get after it on the defensive end. What did I tell you? He dapped me up at halftime, and I knew what was going to happen. I said, "Hey, monster! <laughs> hey, guess what?" And then right away in the third quarter, two back to back threes. So yeah, I mean, come dap me up at halftime, Oopers, if you if you try to get buckets in the <laughs> second half. Hey, and I'll say this against uh, Fort Bend Clements, the game was they were down two. Uh, at, with like three minutes left in the in the second quarter, and four straight possessions, he either assisted or scored on, and kind of righted that ship. And, and Rich Point didn't look back after that. X, X factors, you know. I'm gonna just jump right there to Malik Presley. I mean, he, he, blue, we can, blue. Don't we're not gonna not do this. You have another guy on the new kids on the block. Talk about him. We're not gonna leave no kid left behind. Here, oh, sorry guys. I mean, it's my boy. So go ahead. This guy's oh, a fucking uh, yeah. I'm so love. I apologize. Yes, I skipped it. Zach Gomez Villanueva. He is this little gym rat out there oh, for yeah. the Broncos. I mean, you, he, if you if you lose sight, boom, he's gone. And then you have to scan the floor, and all of a sudden he gets a three. He has such a quick release. He's so fun to watch. And you know what? He's five six, five seven, and he can shoot the heck out of that ball, and he can handle it. He weaves in and out of pressure, gets the ball out of his hands. But when he gets the ball out of his hands, he wants it right back as he's setting himself up and. And that crowd, those that student body, they love them oh, some yeah. Zach out there. No, he has enough pop to, like you say, five six five seven. He has the pop to play somewhere at the next level, in my yeah. opinion. Quick release, but you know, just all over the court, and one of those guys that just is a game changer. Yeah, he, he's got to play in that fast system, and, and maybe put some pressure. You know, yeah, allow him to kind of get loose and freelance a little bit. Absolutely. I, I remember at a round rock, yeah, so he had a thirty nine and a forty one point game. So <laughs> he, yeah, tops in Texas. He can fill it up. Well. He filled it up really well. 
Okay. Um, now X Factors. Now, now <laughs> X Factors. Uh, Luke Coffrin, I have a rival for you for best jump shot. And that's Bobby McWard. Oh my gosh, McKinney Christian, so pretty. Um, he had to play a lot of this game on the ball, and they played a, a team from New York who was very good. Um, he got going early, and then they realized they needed to put their um, best defender on him, who has offers everywhere. And, you know, Bobby then became more of a facilitator and just handled his business. But my gosh, if this guy gets loose, he plays for um, 3D Empire. 3D, yeah. uh, 3D Empire, and He's he's a name that's going to continue to go up. He has a nice side, nice strong build. He moves well. He can play the point guard in spurts, but boy, you want that guy off the ball because he can flat stroke it. Yeah, I have two uh, two players from Cy Falls, Dalen Porter and Jacob Durant. You know, we talked about earlier they made it to the championship game in the Cy Fair Invitational, and these two pieces right here they got to be X factors. You know, you have Josiah McBride and Tugler who are going to be their two staples. But to be able to win big games on the big level, you're going to need guys that are going to be able to produce. And I saw both of these guys produce. Uh, Dalen Porter, sophomore, had 22 or 24 in front of Sam and I in one of the early games in the event. And it was a quiet, just like I said, I go back to no nonsense. He finishes and makes plays where he needs to make plays. Hit threes, strong body, probably 6'4", 6'5", strong body frame. Puts his shoulder in kids, finishes, hits the open three, get, plays defense, and then... Duran, in the game that I filmed against Summer Creek, hit a huge three down the stretch. So, you know, a kids kids that want to make plays are going to be on the court when it matters. And like you said, if you try to take away Tugler and Josiah McWright, you've got two players right here that aren't afraid of the moment, are going to help them win a lot of games, especially big games that matter, like playoff games. Yeah, and I'm, when I was saying before my X Factor would be Malik Presley, I mean, we could easily put him in their headlines. It's like a lot of kids, we can put him in a lot of different places. But when you look at his ability and his athleticism, he goes and he punishes that rim. Doesn't matter if it's a rebound or a dunk. He is in attack mode, it seems like, 100% of the time. And that's where he's most effective. So when you look at him on both ends running the court, he's going he's gonna to impact the game on both sides because of his athleticism, his length, his ability to kind of uh, move around the defense to go get something done. And he's, he's exciting to watch when, he's in the, when he is focused on the rim. I think that that's... The key to him, and, and, and a lot of his game is going to come from those types of uh, plays. Malik is also just a true guy who can guard multiple oh, positions. Yeah. Like he has the foot speed, he has the strength, he has the athleticism to guard a lot of positions. So there's a lot to like there. Um, I'm going to wrap up X factors uh, before we hit some of the next gen guys. Kenneth Lewis, Booker T. Washington, 2023, length for days. Um, he showed a lot. He showed he was very impressive. Um, and he was making shots. And when he's making shots, there's not a lot you can do because once you go out too far, his first step is so long. I mean, he's getting to the rim, and it's and it's casual. I, mean, Timmons were watching. He shot a shot from the three point line, and like kind of held his pose, and then he saw it coming off, and he like he jumped yeah. and like caught it in midair off the yeah. rim, and like, like tried to lay it back. Yeah. It was pretty I impressive. was filming, and I saw him. And he walked into a three, real nice and easy three, held the follow through, and then in my camera, like some dude flies. So I'm like, who is that? And it was him. So that just tells you that like. You know, he's willing to do a little bit of everything out there. It was, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, it's good that we had a redo on him. I saw him in the first game of the year. He went one for nine from the field. Uh, I'm sorry, from behind three pointers. And so, in and over two from free throw. So I was like, okay, he's got to be more. So I'm glad that y'all saw him again. All three of y'all, yeah. you, Sam, and, and Michael, that you all were able to see him in, in a different uh, different light out there on the court getting things done. It was one of those moments, like, Tim is across the gym for me, and, like, we made that contact. Like, <laughs> did that really just happen? Uh, so that was pretty impressive. But uh, All right, Blue, we are now into next gen. Why don't you kick us off? All right. Uh, the 2024 and 2025 classes, like seeing them in bunches. We uh, Our list has just gone from – from here to just growing. And as far as 2024s, um, I know people just love our rankings. So um, <laughs> when are we going to give them a 2024 ranking? We'll, we'll go at the sometime in late January. Okay. To really get us uh, get us some more time to, to look at some guys that are blossoming at the you know in the second half here. But uh, uh, Terry Stature was one guy from Westbrook, a 2025 that I, I really liked. He was uh, it didn't get a lot of opportunities because Westbrook does have uh, some senior guards that demand the ball, but he's out there running the lanes. You can see when he gets the ball, he's looking to to make that shot. If it's not there, he'll he'll recognize that he needs to give it up, and defensively he can play out on the perimeter. So he was uh, a freshman that, that 
was in the game in key moments when I saw him? Uh, for me, uh, Michael Collins of Shadow Creek, freshman 2025. Man, he just looks the part already. Solid frame. Doesn't look anything like a freshman. And he's a point guard, too. So when you have another guard like Cam Ambry out there who's a shot maker, having a kid like Michael Collins on the floor allows – Cam Amber to be fresh in the fourth quarter when it's time to hit big shots. And, you know, they tried to come up and press him. He was able to get out of out of weaving and out of traffic. Just He's just composed from the guard position. So I think the coaching staff at Shadow Creek can trust him with the ball to make decisions and not turn it over. That's a lot of things I look for with freshmen. If you're going to be in the court, how efficient can you be and how can you limit turnovers and not really look like a freshman when you're out there? Because obviously, if I'm an opposing coach, I see a freshman with the ball, I want to pressure him. And he showed right away that he can handle pr- uh, pressure, and he's he's strong, confident with the ball. And I was really impressed with him. Um, I'll go with Divine Ugo Chukwu <laughs> from Fort Bend Clements. I hope I said that right. Um, and the first thing we knew about this kid was that he scored like 110 points last week, um, <laughs> just within this. So you, you know, you're that's kind just of, like a wild thing to say because yeah. it doesn't happen too often. You're like, yeah. he scored 100 points. I think last he played week. three yeah. or four games, but yeah. still, like, you know, uh, it was like 110 points. Is that's the first thing you hear about him. So you're you're expecting a guy, maybe a, you know, as a sophomore, maybe a little wild, shooting some tough shots and doing that. And maybe it was just a hot week. But then you go in and this guy's like playing within the flow of the game. Yeah, I was kind of frustrated as a highlight guy. Yeah, like, it was like, don't get to. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was so natural. Yeah. Like um, playing within, you know, Fort Bend Clements, very well coached, you know, kind of run this circle motion type thing. And he's getting downhill, finishing, pitching the ball when it's not there, just playing within the game. Then you look up and he has like 20, 20 points. And you're just like, well, I get it now. And this is a guy, you know, to play with such maturity at that age as a sophomore to understand that it's your decision. It's not your shot. It's your decision to, to make the next best play for your team, whether that be scoring or passing Mm -hmm. Um, that, that speaks volume of this kid's basketball maturity and and just what type of player he's going to be going forward um, because he is one of my favorites in that 2024 class in Houston. I think I have a mark to see after Christmas break. So I'm excited after all three of y'all, what y'all have said about him. I'll jump right there and with Jason Ward from Round Rock, um, a 2024 point guard. Um, he he goes right in with the scheme of things with uh, Jalen Brooks and with <coughs> Reese Miller. But he's out there as as teams focus on the, the two seniors. He's out there getting his shots and he's making the most of them. Really like his speed in the open court. Uh, like his ability to with to see the floor and give it up at the right time, and then it comes back to him knocking down threes or getting to the to the, to the rack. I mean. Not physically, he's not there yet, but speed and uh, decision making, he is. Uh, for me, Jacoby Osborne of Four Ben Elkins, you know, I just, this guy's a Swiss Army knife. Um, might lead the team in offensive rebounds. He's just a mismatch, a long guard, 6'4, 6'5, long arms, creates so many deflections on defense. Like he jumps the passing lanes, he runs well. Like I said, if you run with Chris Johnson, you're going to find the ball. He's catching alley oops strong built guard already you know finishes well in traffic if he doesn't finish like i said he's cleaning up the glass just does everything and makes winning plays for a four ben elkins team that has some aspirations to to win a lot of games this year and that you plug that sophomore in and he's a guy that you he doesn't start he's six man but i mean it's hard to take him off the court once he's already on there because he does so much for that team plays a different role we saw him with team fox and he's yeah. playing a different role in high school and he's, he's thriving that's good to see where you you know, we talked about it with, like, Tyree Davis. When you can play these two different roles yeah. and still thrive and stand out, uh, that's a big deal. Um, I'm going to jump in. Chris McDermott, talk of the town. Booker mm-hmm. T. Washington, 2024. <laughs> this dude. Um, Video game numbers as we headed down there. Yeah, what, know, 28 and 27 yeah, going? Yeah. Or it might have been 29 and 28, yeah. something like that. I, I told you, I've, I've seen him go for 30 and 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it's, it's workmanlike. It's not flashy. He just gets the rebound. He lays it up. If you throw it to him down in the post, guess what? He's going to go through you and go lay it up. That's a great description because when I was watching for the first time, I'm thinking to myself, how good could this kid really be? Is, is this, you know, it's just like you said, it's just kind of uh, natural. I, I got the ball. I'm going to finish. Yeah. I'm going to go rebound. And so I was a little bit confused on really what level he was going to be. But, I mean, he's he's been consistent. Yeah, he just continues to get stuff done. And then I saw him against Elkins. You know, we're, we're, we're very high on Jackson Fields. We think he's a very, very good player. And, you know, he's going toe-to-toe with this guy. He's meeting him at the rim, <laughs> blocking the shot, and we're like, dang, man. So um, Chris McDermott, he he lived up to a lot of the hype I was hearing. And it was different um, than I may have thought. It was just 
workmanlike, clean. He just gets it done. A very high floor player. You're, you know what you're going to get with a guy like this every single night. And coaches love that. You're not playing roulette. Right. <laughs> you're getting a constant flow of points and rebounds. And who does not want that? All yeah. right, Blue. Finish us oh, off with your okay. last two. Last is going to be Trap Johnson first off. Uh, I'm going to talk about a kid again that I've talked about before, uh, Aiden Richard, uh, later on. But Trap Johnson and him are going to be probably the ones right now fighting for who's who's at the top of the list when it comes to just the Central Texas. Trap Johnson, brother of TJ Johnson, my goodness. This guy can sit there and knock down threes and bunches. He can put it on the floor. He's got one thing that he does have that maybe – uh, uh, that's a little different from his brother is his ability to kind of get that burst and stop, shoot it, distribute it. I mean, I mean his brother's pretty yeah. Awesome. Lipscomb signee, like he's, yeah, he's a yeah. big deal. Brother, I mean. So so trap, great name. Secondly, <laughs> really solid game for a sophomore. You got the tip on that one a while back, and we're like, when can we see him? I got to him. Two more guys that that I, I want to jump in there real quick was Rouse, Saul Rouse. Uh, Amari uh, Haywood, Haywood and JoJo and JoJo Moore. Um, can I add in them here? Uh, they're going to be really good for the years to come alongside Mahmood. I mean, JoJo's kind of this more crafty athlete that gets up and down the floor. Amari's just this brute that just uses strength and rebounds and power whenever he can. And then um, just kind of throwing them in the mix here, um, uh, Nazir Mahmood. He had it really easy this weekend when I saw him and and uh, scored over twenty points in two games and a and a game and a half that I saw him and yeah. he continues to rise. No, I mean as we talk about that whole team, I broke down some film also and I didn't realize those two that you mentioned were sophomores. Yeah. You know, and with Mahmoud and then you have Cole Andrews, Heights. There, they have a really solid and complete team that will win some games for sure. Absolutely. So let's move into gossip. This gossip is. You know, we're not talking bad about anybody. Yeah, These are yeah, storylines yeah. we that we're making it up either. We, <laughs> what we're seeing, yeah. we're hearing this uh, through the Twitterverse, and we're hearing how great players are playing, and it and it makes us feel a little bit of the the missing out. And so we want to we want to come see you, and we just want to kind of hit on some of those storylines that we've heard on social. And yeah, so I'm going to kick us off. Macaulay Roberts, San Antonio Churchill, 2022. Seen him all summer. Seen our San Antonio Gasso, and then I'm seeing him put up 30 and. 15s or 30 and 10s and just like you knew his jumping ability his rebounding ability all these things it, it's seemingly really coming together because i've seen him in the summer um and at our fall gas so just kind of have some ups and downs and to see that you know he's putting together some really consistent games that's really good news because this is a this is kind of a late bloomer guy who has a lot of upside and a lot of talent and for him to be putting it together right now is is, is awesome and I, and I think it says a lot for his game that Coach uh, Bradley is giving him those that many opportunities. They trust him. And I think that that's something that as a college recruiter you can move forward going, this guy has a lot of ability with that athleticism to score the ball. Yeah, for me, Noah Shelby. And I've seen Noah Shelby three or four times this, this year already. Um, but with that Green Hill makeup, as an opposing coaching staff, they're not that deep. So their game plan is going to be pressure Noah, pressure Noah, pressure Noah. And – no better situation than a Lancaster team to come try to pressure Noah with that culture. And Noah ends up going for 40 on him and gets the win for Green Hill. That, we continue to say Noah's a big-time shot maker. And I think he's had to figure out, okay, I don't have as many options around me. He has some bigs around me, but not a lot of guards on the team to be able to give them the ball for a little bit. So he has to play all 40 minutes with the ball in his hands. And I think he's continued to get better and better in that position. I think this year for him, as he gets ready to hand – head over to Vanderbilt, it's going to do well for him as far as development as a player and as a lead guard. I want to add something. He, he is such a great kid. You know, he's always very talkative. He's kind of quiet, but if you ask him a question, he answers. And you don't have to talk about basketball with him. And that's what I like. And, uh, you know, last few weeks back, I was able to just – he tapped me on the folder, shoulder. I said hi to him. We just started kind of talking about everyday stuff. It was really just fun to not talk about basketball. Yeah. It's really fun to – Break, Michael, you and I had a great conversation about it. Just kind of break the fourth wall and understand that these are these are human beings and these are kids, <laughs> yeah. you know. And just to have a conversation with them, it's really fun to kind of get to know them and see where their heads at and all this stuff. And just you know, have a real life conversation with them, even if it's for a few seconds. But um, we that was something we talked about. It's just really yeah. cool to get to know these kids. No, absolutely. Um, I'll jump in. 
Matthew Lewis from Houston St. Thomas Episcopal. I went down and saw him some tournament in Houston. I can't even remember the name. There's so many Concordians and Lutherans and all that stuff. Um, but I went and saw him, and unfortunately, he was playing Roosevelt, and he got two fouls real early in the first half. Um, and I had to bolt to another location, so I didn't get to finish that game. And I was upset because I've seen Matthew Lewis go off, yeah. you know, go off, off, like 30s. Um, and, and I'm just scrolling through Twitter, and I'm like, 28, 26, 29. And I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I just missed it. And I know how good of a player Matthew is. You can score from all over the place. Um, but just we see you, man, and we, we think really highly of your game. So Matthew Lewis at Houston St. Thomas Episcopal. He's a 2022, and he's a guy who's who's really worth seeing and is a really fun guard. Yeah, and I'll just go into uh, my gossip here. Uh, you can talk about relationships like, with with getting to know the kids. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very thankful for, like, John Hurst from San Antonio Reagan. He knows that I've seen uh, his sophomore, Aiden Richard, but he calls me up and says, hey, had a great weekend, send me film, was able to look, and just he scored. I, re- I went back on uh, to our episode 12, 11 or 12, and saw what I uh, had said about him. That hasn't changed as far as shot-making ability. The one thing I said was he probably won't average over 20 points a game in that system. Well, he went off for 22 and 27, maybe give give or take a point there, but in two out of his three games. So we creating uh, bulletin board material over here about <laughs> these kids? So, <laughs> so I, I just feel like watching that film, you know, when he has wide open space, you better close out on him quick because he shoots that ball and it, it's going to – it's going to go in, and, and he shot 67% behind three-point line this past weekend. Mm, that's the right number for Coach sure. Hurst, I like the flamethrowers. Thank you for uh, reaching out and telling us of, to take a look at those games. Yeah, and it's it's always nice, Blue. You kind of mentioned it when you go see a kid, and then you see him again, and it's you're like, oh, I don't. I don't have to change my write up. Like yeah. this is this kid is what he is, and that's why we try and get eyes on him in the summer, in the high school season, um, to see what type of player you are consistently. Yeah. And we get multiple eyes on you so we can we can discuss that and go from there. But well, I just want to make one quick correction on my part when we were talking about San, San Antonio Churchill. Uh, I said coach Bradley. It's coach Lacey. It's Brad Lacey. I just <laughs> was in my head when I spit it out. I was like that's not right. What am I doing? If you know Blue, yeah. he does that often. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's it's genuine. <laughs> it's genuine. It's real. Um, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Gasocast. Make sure you join our community. Um, it's all free, guys. Social media at Texas Hoops Gasso, at Texas Hoops TV, at iFilm Hoopers, yeah, at Gasso Mass, at Gasso Blue. Like the um, color, B L U E. At Texas Hoops Gasso is also on Instagram and TikTok. So subscribe, comment below. We love interacting with you um, if we can. So we'll see you next time.